Well, the high powered laser weapon that we're hearing about uh, this week called Dragonfire is something that has been de developed by the by DSTL Porton Down, the uh, uh, military science laboratory um, in the UK. Now, it's very significant, I think, that the British government have, have gone public on this because this does appear to be a little bit of, you know, Star Wars, future type technology um, sort, sort of weaponry. But the context is very important, I think, at this time. What One of the challenges, and, and we are being very much sort of controlled, uh, our thinking particularly of what's happening um, in Ukraine at the moment, and perhaps also the Red Sea. And the context here is, is hugely significant. So with the Ukraine um, conflict, what has been new is, is the use of drones, these small, some of them very small, unmanned aerial vehicles uh, that you can buy on the internet for as little as a couple of hundred dollars. They have a camera on them. And we've seen thousands of them being used, uh, mainly by the Ukrainians, but also by the Russians, to drop hand grenades through tank hatches um, and to uh, direct fire for artillery, or artillery weapons. Um, but there are thousands of them, tens of thousands, um, allegedly, the Ukrainians are getting by a million this year. So, so they are an absolute threat. And what has recently ha been happening in the Red Sea is sort of very illustrative of the challenge. So the Houthi terrorists in Yemen have been firing uh, missiles and firing um, unmanned drones uh, with explosives on them at shipping. This is creating huge turmoil, um, such to the extent that the British and the American navies have been shooting down these missiles and drones. Now, they are, the British Navy, are firing missiles that cost a million or two million pounds at a drone that costs $15,000. And there's a lot of criticism from the uninitiated about what a waste of money this is. Well, at the moment, it's what the British Navy has. But you've got to think that these missiles and drones are being fired at ships that are probably worth, you know, 500 million pounds. So so actually, and the whole impact it has on the globe, it's it's still good value. But then if we switch back um, to Ukraine, where thousands of these missiles, cruise missiles, uh, ballistic missiles and drones are being fired uh, into Ukraine by, by, by the Russians um, at the moment, they are using expensive Patriot missiles, um, other air defense uh, missiles to knock these things down. And we know that the Ukrainians are sh short of ammunition. We know that Britain, you know, we've given them a lot of ammunition for these um, type of air defense weapons and it's expensive and we're running out. So really in reaction to that, the, the sort of Nirvana, the, 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 the silver bullet is to have something that is highly effective and cheap that can counter this threat. Um, and when you identify a threat, um, what you always have to do is try and mitigate it. If you if you don't try and mitigate and forget about it, that threat's going to really you know kick you in the backside, sort of thing. So to me, this is a hugely uh, um, significant moment because it would appear that the uh, British military um, laboratory Port and Down have developed a laser high energy weapon, which is relatively cheap, very accurate, and can do the job which these missiles that cost up to you know several million pounds are doing at the moment. Lasers are a very concentrated beam of light, and uh, they're what uh, they, they are line of sight weapons, and and of course. You know, I when I was a tank commander in my Challenger One and Challenger Two tank, I, I had a laser which was used to basically find out the range to the enemy tank you were firing at. So you fired a laser first of all, and very quickly that came back and told you exactly how far away that tank was, really to the you know nearest millimeter. So over, you know, and some of the ranges we were firing at maybe up to 3,000 metres. So in, incredibly accurate. Uh, so it's, it's, it's line of sight. There is nothing to affect that line of sight. 
um, then the laser will keep going. Now, the laser I had on my tank was a low powered laser. Um, they were still dangerous and one had to be very careful. Uh, and the stories we see of people flashing these sort of, um, you know, household lasers, uh, laser pointers, um, you know, up to the sky, you know, several miles uh, can affect, um, you know, pilots flying airplanes, etc. So when you have this beam of light that is very accurate, if you can generate enough power in it, you can then create a weapon. So I suppose in simple terms, I, I think uh, Port and Down have said, you know, this is like hitting a pound coin, which is what about a centimeter in diameter over a thousand meters. But actually, um, you know, because the laser won't dissipate as it were, if you can hit a pound coin at a thousand meters, you should be able to hit it at 2,000 meters, 3,000 meters as well. So the, the accuracy is, is phenomenal. It's just drawing a straight line that won't deviate over, you know, virtually whatever range the power will allow you to um, uh, look out to or attack out to. The laser is, um, is basically you need a power source to generate that, that beam of light. Once you have identified the target, so... To create a weapon, you need some something, some sort of something kinetic or chemical, some sort of punch that is going to do the damage at the target end, if you like. But first of all, you need to acquire that target. You need to find it. So this uh, dragon fire weapon it will not just be a laser. It will also have something uh, to identify the target, be that a visual thing. Uh, be it electronic, whatever else. Now, once that target has been identified, and let's say, let's first of all say it's a drone, um, the, the farer will fire the laser at that drone, and this high energy will disrupt the structure of the drone and uh, will fry its electronics, if you like, uh, the thing will fall to the ground. Now, as well, if you're firing at a missile, um, if you direct that laser at the warhead, the explosive end, if you like, the laser is likely to create an explosion. So that will blow it up in the air. We then sort of look at, you know, what is the best way of having an effect at target end? Um, it might be a good idea to blow up that missile in the air if it's high enough, um, but then you've got a problem uh, with with debris and collateral damage, as it were, or it might be to fry the electric so it goes off off course. I think what what um, what the uh, the the British military is saying as well is this is going to be key for preventing collateral damage because if you can so accurately hit something, you can choose the time and place that you hit that target. So at the moment, with missiles firing into places like Kyiv uh, and other Ukrainian cities, basically the Patriot missiles and the other air defense missiles just have to hit them when they can. And if they explode over you know, a populous area, the debris coming down is going to create, can create collateral damage and civilian casualties. However, if you are so uh, confident of your accuracy, um, you can take that weapon down where you know it's not going to have an impact. So, you know, a cruise missile being fired at, at uh, Kiev, for instance, if you can hit it, let's say, 10 miles outside Kiev before it gets there and the missile breaks up and just falls in farmland, then all the better. And that's why I think um, Port and Down and the British government are, are saying so much about the accuracy because it is so accurate you can choose where you're going to take those drones and missiles down. And that's going to be a key capability for this. The other element, as we've uh, covered before, is the cost. So some of these cruise missiles that the Russians are firing cost hundreds of thousands of pounds, several million dollars, depending on their sophistication. In that case, firing a two or three hundred thousand pound Patriot missile is, is, is fine. But what we're understanding with these high-powered lasers 
you know, the cost for one firing is about 10 pounds. Now, if we can then say, right, we can take down a million pound cruise missile exactly where we want to with something that only costs 10 pounds, then, you know, that that is really interesting. Not, not only is it very cost effective for, you know, British defence, but but of course it makes your enemies think twice. You know why why on earth would you fire a million pound missile when you know that it's going to have no impact at all? So again, hugely significant. And, and I understand when when we look at costs and all the rest of it. You know, firing one of these high powered lasers is sort of equivalent running an electric bar for a, for an hour. So you know you don't. It, it, it's very good value. The infrastructure required. Is a great deal less than you know the current anti-aircraft, anti-air missiles, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, and the fact that the British government have really gone public with it now sort of gets one to believe that these these weapons are probably pretty close to being available, and it's a really clear uh, message to particularly President Putin that um, we are way ahead of the technology game. And we have seen recently how, you know, the latest, most modern, indestructible Russian tanks have been uh, destroyed with you know, little more than machine gun fire. So the whole myth that the Russian bear technologically and uh, a military and everything else is way ahead of NATO, you know, that 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 to me, that message coming out of uh, of the Ministry of Defence uh, over the last couple of days is very clear to say, actually, Russia, Putin, you're way behind. So um, back off.